back then, that isn't the way these matters were approached. That's our policy. We not only call the police, we tell the accused priest that we are calling the police or have called the police or filed a report. Pope has a bigger agenda. He's got to get on with other things of talking about the environment and uh, protecting uh, migrants and carrying on the work of the church. We're not going to go down a rabbit hole on this. So I think we have to be realistic and, and say this, this claim goes back over decades and decades. How does it feel knowing children were sexually abused at the hands of priests under your watch? Well, that's why if that came to, to light, we move to remove that priest. We're very, very sorry this happened. And that's why we've taken the steps to see that it doesn't go on. We are trying to address a problem that some people have. We have spent a lot of time very fruitfully on what I would refer to as the effective response to the crisis and the formulation of some wonderful plans and ideas for moving forward. And that is our devotion to each other as members of the conference and the College of Bishops. We must not allow outside groups of any kind in this country or anywhere else to interfere with or attempt to break the bonds of our collegial union. Are you aware that you have two priests with credible sexual abuse allegations currently in active ministry in your diocese? Um. It depends what names you're talking about. Father John Keller and Reverend Terrence That's not Brinkley. a credible one. Are they, and are they Terry was never, was never credible. We're working on the list.